Okay. So if you actually want to like take that feed post from the Northeast chapter and start sharing it, go for it. Can you also share this post in the first live session? Yes, let me share this now. Great. All high early people tuning in, we're just sharing this live session across all of our social media right now so that anybody who has the ability to tune in to this live demo portion of the Horseshoe Crab Festival video, um, you are welcome to do so. Uh, also, this is not the full webinar if you want to also watch the full webinar after our live session with the horseshoe crabs please go to the new york city audubon uh, webpage uh, go under festivals and just quickly register for the horseshoe crab festival because then you'll get a registration link to be able to log into the zoom um, you can also potentially check the new york city audubon facebook page to see if they're streaming their webinar on their Facebook page as well in the Horseshoe Crab Festival event or either on their main page. Um, so we'll do our thing here in a little bit. Uh, it'll be about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then after this feed is done, I will also try to look around and see if I can find the stream of the webinar and post it on our Northeast chapter page as well. Uh, I hope, we'll see. We are live. You guys just tell me when you're ready. Well, we're ready for whatever. I'm waiting so, for Alex to okay. share everything. Yeah. Should we start at the same time? We're, we're setting up here. We're going to go on Zoom in just a moment. We're at 11 a.m. Yeah. So we have uh, two more minutes to go on. Oh, yeah. Two more minutes. I just let... We have six people on the Facebook, but I'm letting them know to tune yeah, into the webinar. We Conservancy. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on Facebook Live. Hi, everyone. Yay. Share with your friends. Give us the thumbs up. Ask questions. That's right. <laughs> it's a beautiful day out here. Um, I will put that whole disclaimer I just said at the end as well. About details on the webinar and what happens after this live Horseshoe Crab Festival event. So tune in to the end for more details after we're all done here. Uh, we're at the American Ball Fields uh, with Don from the Literal Society and Alex Zablocki from the Jamaica Bay Rockway Parks Conservancy. And we're gonna begin, I think in about another minute. In the meantime, enjoy a moment of quiet with the crabs.
It's been a while, but we'll do cleanups here soon again. Are we ready to go? Okay. So not quite yet. <laughs> Hi, Donald. We'll start in a little bit. Uh, I'll just send a quick disclaimer again that there is a greater portion of this webinar uh, on Zoom. So we're just doing the live session with the horseshoe grabs here with Dawn. We're going to begin in a little bit. If all of you on the Facebook right now want to tune into the rest of the webinar, um, just go on the New York City Audubon uh, webpage. Uh, under their festivals link to sign on to the Horseshoe Crab Festival and tune in. Uh, or hopefully check their Facebook page and see if they're streaming it as well in conjunction with this. So we're going to be joining their webinar shortly. This one is just coming up right to my foot. Oh my goodness. Hello. He's bumping around. <laughs> Bye. It's a great day to see some horseshoe crabs. What was that? Perfect. Okay. Just give me a holler and walk, I'll walk over. <laughs> yeah. struggling to get over some shells. When we start, I already see a question from Donald. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask Don your question uh, when he's doing the presentation so that y'all can get all of your pressing questions answered about horseshoe crabs. Ooh. I'm about to go on. Okay. <laughs> Alex, we'll go get it. Oh, we'll go I have right. a, oh, I see it right from Yeah, you. I have my sights on okay. it. We're good. Okay. What's it? It's a Hey 
go. There you go. <laughs> nice. We're in Crab Central here. <laughs> ones here. Okay. All right, everyone. We are getting ready to join the New York City Audubon webinar. So Don and Alex will be doing their presentation. We'll be doing our introductions to you. Danielle, thanks so much. Thanks to New York City Audubon um, for running the tech today, and thank you everyone for joining us. We are here in Broad Channel. Um, we are also on Facebook Live. Hi. Um, here's Alexandra from the American Little Society, and you're here today to experience horseshoe crabs um, in person, live from Jamaica Bay, and we're here with the oldest inhabitants of Jamaica Bay, the horseshoe crab, and also our friend Don Reapy. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over now to Don. <laughs> hey, welcome everyone to the 5th Annual Horseshoe Crab Festival here in downtown Broad Channel on lovely Ballfield Beach here at the south end of Broad Channel right near the, the Rockaway Bridge. <laughs> lovely beach here except for maybe that old uh, remnants of an old pier over there. And what we have here are just hundreds of horseshoe crabs. Amazing. I was here yesterday. There were only a few. I thought we had to say, oh, maybe, maybe it's going to be good. But a lot of it has to do with water temperature. So the water temperature is six, 60 degrees or more. That's when they really come in. So uh, we're assuming water temperature is close to that right now, which is good. And the crabs are starting to come ashore. So they come ashore during the, the high tides at the new moon and the full moon. But not always right around but in greatest numbers around those times. Because that ensures that the tides are gonna be high up there. They come up on the, the edge of the high tide, lay their eggs, and then they go out again. And a couple of weeks later, from two weeks to a month, the, the eggs will hatch out with the next super high tide. And all those little tiny, tiny, perfect replicas of a tailless of the horseshoe crib will go out and they'll become part of the, the zooplankton, the soup here that feeds everything else in the bay. And what we're not seeing a lot of, uh, shorebirds yet. It's a little early. I think the shorebirds are coming in starting next week. So the next really good, uh, the full moon should be a really peak time. And we expect to see lots of red knots, hopefully, the endangered shorebird that relies on the horseshoe crab eggs. And they have to actually eat voraciously. And they, act, they double their body weight before they can make their trek north to the tundra where they breed. But let's look at some of these critters. Here's a little guy right here. The smaller ones are males, okay? So the male horseshoe crab um, is about half the size. We'll get a female too. And they're inter interesting for many things, all right? Number one, 
they're a living dinosaur. Actually, they predate the dinosaurs and are found back in the fossil records over 400 million years. That's even before I was born, actually. Close, but before. But if you look at them, this is a perfect design. A nice little hard chitin shell, like a little tank. Compound eyes, like insect eyes, with many facets. So they also have little eyes in front. They have light-sensitive receptor cells on the tail and interior. So they know where they are at all times, and uh, they can detect motion, all right? They also have, uh, I'm sure I can detect pheromones. When the females are laying the eggs, that will bring in even more of, of the males around. And we'll, we'll see them in tandem. Usually the male is, is attached to the female. And as she goes around the bay and comes in to lay eggs, he'll be there to fertilize them. But sometimes you'll have six and seven males all around the female. That is, an, is even greater insurance that they'll be fertilized. But let's go around and look at some of these guys. The tide's coming up still. We have a nice cluster right at the edge over there. Let's look at that and let me get a big mix. And Don, one. we have to watch where we step, right? We have quite a few. Oh, there's so many. They're it's all right. around us. They're We're surrounding us. The water let's is go. nice and clear here today in Jamaica yeah. Bay. We are in Broad Channel, mm -hmm. at Broad Channel American Park in the ball fields. And Ooh, this hi. is the spot that was featured in the video you just saw that we filmed about two years ago. And it has historically been the place where we've done the Horseshoe Crab Festival in person. Today we'll be joined in person starting at 11.30 to show some folks the Horseshoe Crabs. So they can, they can live out of water for quite a while. They, they breathe through gills in here, the gill flaps. And they can, they, they can even dig down in the sand as they do in winter. So they, they, can, bleed, uh, they can live in uh, ox low oxygen water. The other thing, they need salt water. They need a good salinity. So the optimum uh, breeding temperature or breeding salinity for the horseshoe crab is 20 to 30 parts per thousand. In the bay here, it's about 23 parts per thousand, all right? So you get up to 36, that's the, the open ocean, which is coming in from there. <clears throat> but this guy also has some, well, first of all, identifying a male. The male's first two claws or they call little boxing gloves, or these these hooks. That's where they hang on to the back of the female as they travel around. The other the other little claws here's for digging, and they feed on a lot of marine organisms in the muds. You know, little seed clams and, and oysters and, and marine worms and so on. But uh, and the mouth is over here. They will grind up the food. And notice, you know, I'm I'm not afraid of this animal. When I was a kid, I thought this was a poison stinger. And believe it or not, kids today still think that. And, but it's not. It's just a telson or tail. It's a rudder. Helps them steer. Or if they get flipped over, they can right themselves. This guy has some hitchhikers, a little slipper shell. So the slipper shells will attach themselves. He also got a little colony of bryozoa. I don't know if you can see them. He lets us here. He would have to hold still a little okay. bit. He holds still. A little see. gray patch. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at that closely, these tiny, tiny little dots, that's a whole colony of little animals, the bryozoa, that's living on the horseshoe crab. So this, you know, this is a community right here. And on top, we have the, uh, the watch and pause. The barnacles. Barnacles. There you go. So if there's any questions, please leave them in the yeah. chat. Um, Alex, are there any questions on Facebook? Uh, I have two, actually. Well, first, I have a hello from Mickey and Barbara Collins. Hey, Mickey and Barbara. Mickey's the expert. We miss you, Mickey. So, uh, uh, and also, a question from Donald saying, are there in shells as homes, or is it part of the body, the shells? Are they, you know, are they part of the body, or are they separate? The shell? The little slipper shells. Oh, so, no, 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 that's separate. That's a separate animal. Yeah. Uh, that's Propigula fornicata, that little uh, slipper shell. But we're going to look at a nice cluster over here because I want you to see a big female. And, uh, here we have the female jungle. Oh, yeah. The size of the female related to the male. And look at all the slipper shells on this big female here. The barnacles. Look at this guy. This guy just loaded with barnacles. Oh, he's attached. The female is really dug way down. So the females will dig down, about six inches down, lay big clusters of eggs. And 
throughout the whole bay, they, they lay billions of eggs. And those nutrient-rich eggs are what everybody feeds on. All the shorebirds that depend on them when they're migrating. The red knot, example, for example, travels all the way from Brazil non-stop to Delaware Bay and Jamaica Bay. So Jamaica Bay uh, is a smaller center than Delaware. Delaware Bay is the epicenter for the, the horseshoe crab in the United States, right? And the horseshoe crabs, the farther south you go, they get smaller. I've been in Florida, where well, this might be a female, tiny, all the way in Florida. If you go north up to Maine, they also get smaller. So they're bigger and more numerous right here in the mid-Atlantic, especially Delaware Bay and Jamaica Bay. Right Don, here. we have a question. When yes. do the eggs get fertilized? Uh, right now. So you can see what's happening. The females dug in. As she lays the eggs, they are depositing sperm, which will wrap down into the egg nest and fertilize. And Don, uh, someone's asking about horseshoe crab monitoring. Um, yes. Do we want to take a look at one of the horseshoe crabs over there? We, we well, we found a, a, a tagging report. Some groups are tagging. The big research has been going on in Delaware Bay. I'll find out where they go, how long they live. They figure they live on a, a, up to maybe 20 years. So the first few years of life, they shed their, their skins, their shells. All right, what the crab does is when, when it's ready to, to grow, takes in excess water, and the water pressure splits the shell open in the front, the crab walks out and it's a little bigger. And they do that for the first 10 years of their life. After that, they're adults, they're sexually mature, they don't shed their shells after that. That's why all these uh, crabs here have things growing on them. All the barnacles and propitula shells and bryozoans. So people might find the molten shells on the shoreline when they come yes. fishing or they're out at the beach. So if you find a shell and you look in the front and it's an open flap, that is a, a, a cast off. If, if not, it could be a dead one too. So, so um, someone's asking, they're laying their eggs in the water and not higher up on the beach. Can you elaborate on that, Tom? Yeah, What's in, happening in the here? water. They're laying their eggs uh, right here at the high tide area. So when the tide goes out, they get a, a chance to dry out a little bit. And then two weeks later, at the next really high tides, you know, two, three weeks later or so, they will uh, hatch out. The action of the water on the eggs will, uh, will uh, cause the eggs to open up and the little ones to come out. And that so was happening here last night, right? Yeah, Probably, uh, yeah we have we have eggs on the. Here. So let's see let's see the shoreline here where eggs might have been laid earlier. These little depressions might be where they had. Uh, let's see if we can find some eggs now. Uh, yes. Ooh. I yeah. see eggs. I see eggs down here. Getting down, I see a few. Uh -huh. So that might be usually a little ball of eggs they lay. Uh, this is not a good example, but these little tiny, you can see little ones here. Those are eggs. Those tiny little greenish little dots, smaller than a BB. Here, it's on my, my finger. That's a tiny cluster of eggs. It's hard to see on the Zoom, but yes. we'll post this on our social media later. Right. And, um, yeah. Right. And, in some areas down in Delaware Bay, the whole shoreline is covered with eggs. Sometimes, you know, almost a foot deep of eggs. There's just so many eggs out there. And Don, when they when these hatch, where do they go? Do they go <laughs> they, immediately into the ocean? Immediately or? into the ocean. They're part of the zooplankton, all the tiny little animals living out there. And they will grow. And the first year, they'll shed their little shells a few times. Uh, I think they said six or eight times the first year. And after the first year, they might be that big, second year, third year. So they grow in stages, and each time they shed their shell. But they, they will stay in the water. They don't come on land until they're sexually mature and going to lay eggs. And it's only this time of year. Only in the springtime do they come up here. How can we tell how old they are? Uh, it's hard to tell. We just know that they are over 10 or 12, and you get a huge female. And uh, I'm told they live to be about 20. So. I don't know how exact that is. Oh, look at this. And we have a question here. asking, how long do they stay on this shoreline for the season? Oh, they come up several times. A female will come up and lay several clusters of eggs. And they might come up in different areas. So they scatter it out. You know, uh, you want to, you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. Right? So about yeah. what month do we think? I'm sorry? 
How long do they stay? Like until what month about? Oh, uh, the peak time is usually from mid-May to mid-June. And peak during the full moon cycles, the new moon cycles, that's the, the biggest numbers. But I've seen them a few even in summertime, even as late as September I've seen a couple up here. So there's always strays. You want to have different strategies. So again, it's good to have, you know, if there was a disaster at this time, you might lose a whole population. And Don, we have about a minute or two okay. left. Do we want to walk over this way? and Maybe we'll see if we see that. Yeah, 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 let's, over here. See yeah let's look at this big cluster. Okay. And uh, if there's any more questions, please leave them in yeah. the chat. Liz, should we get, get the, she's going to get the. Uh, <laughs> oh. Hello, everybody. You know what? I am going to run off and try to get the tagged one. <laughs> Wish me luck, everyone. Alex is going rogue. This is what happens when you try to do two different feeds. Double duty. Let's see. Where are you, buddy? See, we didn't want to disturb him until we were ready. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Watch me not find him now. <laughs> Move that away. Hmm. Oh, hi. Let's see. So for everyone tuning in, as I said, um, we're kind of filming from two places at once today. So on the New York City Audubon webinar and on our Facebook page. So if you want to catch another angle of this very same presentation or watch the rest of the webinar, please go to the New York City Audubon webpage under festivals, register for the Zoom, and connect. You will get an email with the link. Um, they will also post it online after the fact. He disappeared. Disappeared. The tagged one disappeared. Oh, oh good, we so found the, it. So the, the last pair of legs are like little uh, swimmers. Trimorettes, like little uh, flippers, so they could push off the bottom. And the rest of the legs are just used for picking at the sand. Look, that's not hurting me, right? No, that doesn't hurt. Yeah. Where are her eyes? Oh, there she goes. Oh, that's a really big. Oh, my goodness. Wow. These are the big eyes. This is one big eye. She's a big gal. Look at that eye. That's a big, and it's got many, many little eyes there. It's like an insect eye. Will that hurt? Many factors. This hard shell protects them. We got the extended feed, because why not? Oh, why it is not? a colony of animals called bryozoa living on the shell. That's a whole colony of tiny, tiny animals. Can you see them? Yeah. The bryozoa? Finally, I can see them. I also wanted to... So there's two tagged ones here, right? There was this one and the other smaller yes, one. Yeah, we're, we're wow, how lucky. I, I um, oh, look at those swimmerettes though. Oh my, oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> and all these, and all these yes. different animals came to help. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's called I'll put her back. I'll flip her over, don't worry. You got it? Yeah, I'm going to take a look at the tag. When the shoreline turned over, we flipped them back. Hi, Mama. Look at that tag. She's doing science. <laughs> Get a number on that. There you go. All right, everyone, contest time. So if you got that number, if you send it to U.S. Fish and Wildlife, sometimes, <laughs> as a reward, they send you a very spiffy tin horseshoe crab uh, pin for providing that data on the location of the female. Oh yeah, they get, I know, they get really big. That one is, uh, I think, the biggest I've seen today. Here, so my hand, right? As a comparison. 
Ooh, mama. I'd say that's about two feet with the tail. Ooh, hi. Where are you going? Oh, they got him tagged. Okay. Oh, yeah. Get the number. There she goes. Awesome. Look what she's doing. She's moving the rocks away to get into the sand. <laughs> yeah, Aww. unfortunately, this is not the most scenic or <laughs> the nicest <laughs> beach for them, but they, they survive and they love this beach during the really high tide. This tide is all the way to the beach. Like that. They're very neat. But we're, we're not, we're off the, uh, mm. the new. All right. What's the, what's the best <laughs> yeah, the snails are little hitchhikers. They just kind of take advantage of uh, the open real estate on the crab. It doesn't really hurt the crab, and it's all the benefit for the snail. So they, they share their homes. Take a lifelong ride with these with these crabs. Oh, look at the look at how many things and other male crabs are on this female. Wow. So these are two males, one female. Hanging out. Females are hoping to fertilize some of the eggs that the female is releasing. <laughs> All right. I'll do a little more of a walk around um, and then I will probably end the program. But I figure all you guys tuning in would enjoy, you know, a little extra crab footage. If anyone who's curious, this is in Broad Channel in Jamaica Bay at the American Ball Fields. Uh, if you do decide to make a visit down here, just remember not to disturb the crabs. Observe them from, you know, like don't step on them. Uh, don't pick them up unless they're flipped over and just enjoy what they're doing. Um, but they're going to be here all season, like Don said, as, as late as September. But the peak activity is going to be till about end of June, start of July. Ooh. <laughs> My favorite part about walking around in the water with them is sometimes they will think that uh, I'm a crab uh, and the males will try to like go after your feet and gently like investigate and then move on it's really fun if you've never done that <laughs> please do so um but anyway so i think i will wrap up as our crew of registered people are coming in to enjoy the shoreline again i will say if you want to catch the rest of the webinar there's a lot of great stuff on there going on right now uh both information for kids and for adults uh, so if you want to tune in, go to the New York City Audubon webpage, um, to the festival's link, uh, and just register real quick to the uh, Horseshoe Crab Festival, and you'll get the Zoom link in your email to sign on. Um, if you are not able to tune in, that's okay. I'm hoping they're putting it live on their Facebook page. Um, if that's not happening, it's going to be up on their YouTube channel. So you'll be able to catch the entire festival through the YouTube page that they have. All right. Thank you all for joining. I hope that I will see you um, next year for the live Porsche Crab Festival. You know, if any of you are able, able to come out, it should be fun. We're having a great time out here. Come out here on your own when you have the chance on a good low tide day. And in the meantime, get outside. Enjoy the day. It's gorgeous today. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.